Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. Yesterday, I was watching Roger Clark on Twitch again, and uh, now he's building a 90s web browser on Windows 2000 in Visual C++ 6.0, I think. And it's just mesmerizing. So I'll put a link in the description to that if you want to check it out. Uh, it's just really cool to see that kind of stuff. And Roger was talking about something that got me thinking. He was um, saying that uh, he wants to demystify web browser um, development, I guess. And um, he talked about how people have this idea that this is something impossible, that you can't build this type of thing yourself, and you need a big team, and blah, blah, blah. And obviously, I've, I feel very much the same about operating systems. And so I'm, I'm really, really happy and excited to see that someone else um, is sharing this attitude because a big part of the reason I started making videos about um, working on Serenity is because I want to show people that it's not such a big deal to work on an operating system. And um, if you just zoom in on the day-to-day -day grind of um, system development, then it's just a, a long series of individual programming tasks that, that you can do. And the hard part is, if, if there is a hard part, and I guess there is, but the hard part is, is not the programming part, but like the um, staying consistent, staying focused, motivated, um, and, and those things. It's not so much about each individual task. And yeah, that's, that's ex I think that's just so important. Because I know I've talked about this before, but we really have ended up in a weird place where there are so many things that we just automatically accept that they're not doable by a single person or by a small team. And uh, operating systems and web browsers, I guess, are the most obvious examples of that. And um, I'm trying to do my part <laughs> to demystify operating systems. And lately, I've been doing a little bit of uh, uh, HTML engine hacking as well. Um, probably going to do more of that. But um, I'd like to keep focus on the, on the whole operating system picture. It's just that I happen to think that, um, I mean, I grew up with Windows 95, NT4, 98, and 2000, these things. So for me, um, the idea of an operating system that I have built into me includes things like a um, like a HTML engine and a full desktop environment and stuff like that. And maybe people who grew up with you know old Unix, they think that an operating system is a kernel and a user land, and that's it. And I don't know. We just have different ideas of what an operating system is. But anyway. Um, I think that it's about time that we break this weird conditioning that that we've we've been subjected to, or whatever. I don't I don't know where it comes from. Even um, sometimes I wonder if, if this is all some something that we do to ourselves that we just box ourselves into this corner and we become um, become become stuck in the idea that we need to we need to join big companies in order to achieve anything. Because I used to think that myself, um, especially when I worked at the big companies, obviously, that the only way to, to build software that actually reaches like a billion people is to join a big company. Because you're not going to reach a billion people if you don't join a big company. And these were these kind of slogans that I used in my head to motivate myself why, it, why I should go and work on a big team and a big company on a big product. Um, and there's a grain of truth to it, obviously. Like, big companies, big teams, they can build big things, and big things can have big reach. But maybe that's not the end all, be all of software, like reaching the most amount of people. Um, for the longest time, it, it seemed like the end goal, really, to me. But I've lost that feeling. And now I've sort of fallen back into this idea that, well, what if I could just enjoy computers again? 
you know, what if computers could feel as awesome as they felt when I was a kid? Because I know that everything's awesome when you're a kid, you know? And everything that sucks really, really sucks. Everything that's awesome is really, really awesome. But, um, but that, that way that the computers were so adult and they were so professional and uh, serious and, and business oriented and um, I really, really dug that and um, I am not gonna find that in these consumer products anymore because they're not gonna be built that way and if I want that, I have to build it myself or I have to somehow find it myself. It's not gonna be sold to me anymore, I guess is the point. So, what am I trying to say? <laughs> I got a little off track, because the important thing I wanted to talk about is this demystification that Roger talked about. Um, that it's about time that we demystify operating systems. We demystify web browsers. We demystify, I, I almost want to say games, but like, I think that the indie games um, development community, it's, like I follow some of these people online who do indie games, and it's astonishing how they manage to have this open discussion culture despite not sharing their code in many cases. Like, obviously, when you're making a game, then um, you might not want to share the code of the game until, until later on or whatever, or maybe never, who knows. But, but they still have a very like, vibrant and open discussion about what they're doing, and they're frequently like, showing prototypes and stuff to each other. Um, and it seems like games, games seems like it's in a healthy demystification process of its own. Uh, at least um, smaller games, which is the part that I care about anyway. Um, although I wouldn't mind a, a look at uh, the World of Warcraft source code, <laughs> because I'm curious about it. But that's a whole other thing. Um, so to demystify these things, uh, there are a couple of things that we can do. First and obvious one is to just build um, little prototypes of these things, right? And then um, that's one thing, and uh, that's already been going on. Like people have people have been building uh, little browsers and little operating systems for a long time already. <clears throat> but I'm trying to, I'm guess I'm trying to take it to another level where I also show the process um, very like um, honestly I guess um, because the, you can learn so much from from other programmers right and I'm hoping that by sharing what I do and the process that I do it um, someone can watch that and um, and maybe glean something from it, because <clears throat> um, when I was, I don't know, when I was like 22, um, which is what, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, um, I was very, very interested in programming, but I didn't have any access to any um, like very senior people or people who had a lot of experience that I could learn from. Um, I mean, and I did what I could over the internet, but even so, it was, it was like you could ask people questions on IRC or in mailing lists, but you couldn't really watch them work. And nowadays, it's so freaking cool that I can go and watch other people work and like see their living, breathing programming process and learn from it and see what kind of tricks they get up to and what kind of silly mistakes they make and, and recognize some kind of silly mistakes I make sometimes and um, it's it's just a different time and, and we can we can share so much more of our process today and I think we're so far from um, from reaching the potential of the media the, the medium of, of um, programming broadcasting or whatever and um, very often people ask me why I don't stream my programming and unfortunately I cannot stream right now because of my living situation 
but it is something that I would like to do in the future. Although I will say that there is a there's one large great advantage with uh, pre-recorded sessions is that I don't get distracted because uh, I notice that when I'm watching programmers on Twitch um, that it seems extremely easy to get distracted by the audience and I mean that's there's like really great things about the interactivity and the fact that I can I can talk to the person programming but I like to think of it as an advantage of um, pre-recorded streams that uh, that I can just focus on the task 100% um, so you know but there's probably room for both and I would like to do both someday um, in the future I'll let you know about that uh, yeah programming operating systems and web browsers it's not such a big deal um, compilers it's probably not a big deal either I don't know about this one because I haven't looked into it but it is my understanding that universities are doing a pretty good job of demystifying that one because it seems like they make every um, every CS student has to build some kind of compiler at some point is my understanding I've never been to college so I don't know how that's like but if you if you're hearing this and you're thinking like well yeah compilers not a big deal I built the compiler in school then great you know that they did a great job with that <laughs> and uh, I would love to to um, continue that and take it to OS's and browsers and 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 I feel like there's supposed to be a third thing here but I just can't think of it <laughs> uh, I have to search my soul for things that I am intimidated by maybe I should build a relational database I, I don't have a clue how to do that but how hard can it be right anyways uh, I feel like I'm, I'm repeating myself too much so I'm just gonna stop <laughs> but uh, I'll say thanks for hanging out with me on the commute and uh, I hope you're working on something that's challenging your assumptions and have a great day I'll see you next time. Bye.